So we're going to talk about common calculations with fractions and mixed numbers as it relates to the Certified Welding Inspector exam. This is in collaboration with NAD Skills, which uh, offers a training program to help you get that certification. And so basically, I'm going to walk you through how to do the calculations relevant to the CWI exam. However, when it comes to the welding, I am a math teacher, not a welder, so um, you'll have to refer to Mad Skills training for like more of the, the welding perspective on this. But you do need to know how to do these sorts of calculations, and there are free practice problems at my website. So if you look in the description, you can find information about Mad Skills and the free practice problems and all that good stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about types of numbers because this is actually pretty important when you're doing calculation. So we have the whole numbers, okay? So that's, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. So, so no fractions in there, okay? And then we have fractions. So that's the one that always gives people nightmares, I guess. <laughs> and then um, we also have like decimals. And I have a whole video right where I've talked about how you can convert from fractions to decimals. So those two things are, are kind of, they can be like one in the same a lot of times. Um, not all decimals have a, a fractional equivalent, but um, for, for our purposes, it's, it's okay. Um, and then the, the last type of number that I think is going to be relevant for our conversation today is, is going to be mixed numbers. So those are a whole number with a fraction. And so I want to make sure that you feel comfortable doing calculations with this kind of stuff. So it's important when you see these numbers that you remember it's a whole number with a fraction. And so then you are going to have to treat it as such. Now, one thing I want to mention, you can convert mixed numbers into decimals if you wanted. And I, I want to just talk about like, how can you do this with your calculator? So first of all, just how would you enter in something like four and a half inches on your calculator? So I am assuming that you are using a contractor's calculator. And so I, I just took a look at like, I don't know, I, I must have looked at like 10 different contractors calculators. They all kind of work the same. So to enter a number like this, so you have to recognize that this is a mixed number, okay? And so then the way that you would enter something like this in, so this is in inches, so I'd put in the four inch. So this makes it clear that we've got the whole number part and then I can enter in the fractional part. So this would be one. So there's usually a bar like this for fraction. Um, sometimes you might see a, a button that actually says fraction. So you type one, the fraction bar, and then the two. And your calculator will probably show you then that this shows four and a half. So you have to recognize this and so that you can properly enter these things in. Okay, so we're gonna be playing around a lot with this. And, and like I said, you're, I, I think a lot of calculators will show you that that actually is four and a half so that you know that you entered it in right. If you wanted to convert this to a decimal for whatever reason, so really the, the four you don't have to worry about, it's just this, this second part that you'd have to convert into a decimal. So I would just take one divided by two, that gives me 0.5, and then I would replace the fraction of the, the half, I would replace it with that decimal, so it would become 4.5. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to enter three and one eighth as a mixed number in your calculator, just to make sure you know how to do that, and then find its decimal equivalent. So go ahead and pause the video and then hit play when you think you've done it. Okay, so remember, so, so with these calculators, so you're gonna do three inch, so you're gonna put that whole number in, and then you can put in the, the fractional part that comes next. So those are the typical kind of keyboard or like, keyboard, it's not a keyboard, um, calculator strokes, I don't know, <laughs> what do you call this? <laughs> you get what I'm saying. And then to convert into a decimal, I would take one divided by eight, that gives me 0.125. So then the equivalent decimal will be 3.125. Okay, so there are many times where you're going to need to do calculations with different types of numbers, fractions, whole numbers, mixed numbers, whatever. So part of this, the goal in this lesson is just to make sure you're comfortable with that. So what I want to do is I just want to do a few calculations and then, you know, in, in the training program, you would learn, you know, how to actually apply these or, or where these calculations come up. So, um, we're going to talk all about the calculator strokes, um, that you're going to use to, to like input these things. So for one eighth inch plus one sixteenth inch, what I have found is that most of the contractor calculators don't require you to enter in inches. So you can just really input in the fractions. So you have to find that fraction bar. So you put in the one eighth, so one fraction bar eight plus one, and then the, the fraction bar 16. And so you should be getting three sixteenths inches. So pause if you need to familiarize yourself with that. 
Okay, so now for B here, so notice as, I, as I'm looking at this, this is a mixed number, so I just have to be careful with how I'm entering this. So when I enter this in, it's gonna be three inches, so I call out that whole number, and then I enter in the fractional part, one fraction bar 32 plus, and then I don't need to worry about the inches for the second part, so I can just put in the one eighth. And like I said, I've, I've found in my experiments so far that most calculators just seem to then assume that you know, you're, you're in inches when you enter in that, that fraction. And so anyways, so this will ultimately equal 3 and 5 30 second inches. And then for the last one, uh, just for extra funsies, I decided to do two, to do two mixed numbers. I'm tripping over my tongue here. Okay, so just remember, so since this is a whole number, I have to put in 4 inches into the calculator and then 1 over 4 minus 2, declare that it's whole inches, and then 1 over 8. And if I punch all of that in, so I will get 2 and 1 eighth inch. Because now I want you to pause the video and try these three and then hit play when you think you've got your answers. Okay, so for this first one, so I've got 4 inches and 1 eighth minus 3 inches and 1 half. So you can see my work here uh, um, on the screen. So you can pause if you need to read that over. And so this is just going to be 5 eighths of an inch. So the big thing to notice with this, right, is that you have two mixed numbers. So you just need to make sure you're plugging those in appropriately. Okay, moving on to B. So now I have just one just fraction and then a mixed number. So my calculations need to reflect that. So 1 16th and then 3 inches and 1 half. So that's the entry that I need. And so then I get 3 and 9 16th inches. And then for this last one, so once again I have one mixed number and then one fraction. So when I enter those in, I've got the five inch, so I call it the whole number, and then I enter in the fraction, and then subtract off the one fourth, and I got four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so <laughs> why do you need to know this? So I, I can't speak to the welding, but I do know some of the applications. You need this for tolerance calculations, so I do have a table on that. Um, so I'm going to walk you through just how to do some of these types of calculations. So things like for whole numbers greater than six inches, the tolerance is between plus or minus one eighth of an inch. So how would you actually calculate this? We're going to talk about this, how to do that math. And then another place where this would come up would be like visual inspection criteria. So a question like what is the smallest size a fillet weld could physically measure if the specified size is half an inch? Um, so again, we're getting way out of my depth here. <laughs> I can't weld. Maybe one day I'll try welding. It's getting me kind of interested in it. Um, anyways, but yeah, so these are the, the types of areas where this will pop up. So what I want to make sure you're comfortable with, though, are doing some of those like tolerance calculations. So using that table, I, 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 I think you'd have to do like a calculation like this. So seven inches and it says plus or minus one eighth. So how do you actually interpret this? Okay, so you're coming up with a range. That's what this is trying to get at. This is a, a way of saying find what the range would be. And so I always like to calculate from the smallest to the largest. So I like to set up my calculation. So notice I have 7 inches minus 1 eighth. So this will be the smaller number to 7 inches plus 1 eighth. So I break up this plus or minus. I actually break it up into the two parts like you see here. And then you can plug it into your calculator and, and maybe you want to just pause to make sure you can do that. And so this is what that like that range or that that tolerance would be. So six and seven eighths inches to seven and one eighth inches. So this would be kind of that that range that you're looking for. So if we do that again with this next one. So again, you start from the, the bottom. So I'm going to start one sixteenth inch minus one thirty second. So minus one thirty second and then plus 132nd. So this plus or minus is telling you the, the two things that you need to do with the second number, okay? Um, all right, so if I, if I go ahead and plug those into my calculator, and I, I would double check this if I were you, um, I get 1 16th inch to 1 eighth inch tolerance. So this should also make sense. Um, so if you have like a decent number sense um, when you're looking at this, this should go from smallest to largest. So you want to just kind of do that gut check when you are looking at these things, okay? So I want you to try now, so pause the video here, set up these two calculations all the way, and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so setting up this, this first calculation, so um, I have the minus the 164th inch and then the plus 164th inch. So I plug these into um, the contractor's calculator that I had, and these were the answers that I got. 
So one thing I want to point out here, um, like I said, I, I am a math teacher. If you used a non-contractor's calculator, you would get 364s. The contractor's calculator will just estimate to like the, it, it'll just round to, you know, what the typical tools would actually have as a measure. So if you are using like a scientific calculator, you would get a different number than what a contractor's calculator would tell you. Okay, and so let's just do the other calculation now. So I've got um, this plus or minus 1 16th. So here is how I'm gonna set up those two calculations. And so those are my answers that you see there. So just double check that everything pans out. And uh, yeah, so that will cover just how to work with these types of calculations. So we will end the video there. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this helpful, please consider giving my video a like or leaving me a comment or hitting the subscribe button. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.